Today's analysis seeks to conclude in a detailed trend forecast for the US and UK coronavirus infections and deaths into the end of April, the importance of which being to act as indicators for the primary driver for stock market trend since mid-February. Whereas was the case with my preceding forecast since the end of March, deviations against the coronavirus trend warned of worse prospects for the stock prices as the US and UK failed to follow the South Korean model. The most probable reason why Britain and the US did nothing during February was due to both nations apparently following the herd immunity protocol which requires approximately 60% of the population to become infected so that the virus is no longer able to spread to the remaining population as confirmed by the chief scientific advisor to Boris Johnson's government who publicly stated this objective but refused to discuss the implied death toll. Allow enough, enough of us who are going to get mild illness to become immune to this to help with the sort of whole population response which would protect everybody. Yeah, I mean that, that herd immunity I know you talked about yesterday when you were appearing with the Prime Minister. In, in terms of building up a herd immunity within the UK, what, I mean, what sort of percentage of people need to have contracted the virus? Probably about 60% or so. And uh, we think that this virus is likely to be one that comes back year on year, become like a seasonal virus, and communities will become immune to it. And that's going to be an important part of controlling this longer term. 60%? 60% is the sort of figure you need to get herd, herd I mean, immunity. I mean, even with that, even looking at the sort of the best case scenario, I know we were talking last week and you were saying, you know, half of 1% to 1% fatality in something like this, th that's an awful lot of people dying in this country. Well, I mean, of course, we do face the prospect of, of as the Prime Minister said yesterday, of uh, an increasing number of people dying. That is a real prospect. This is a nasty disease. For most people, it's a Where at even a very conservative case fatality rate of 1%, this would imply to expect 400,000 UK deaths. That is what likely the British government are planning for. Where an actual far higher case fatality rate of 3.5% would have resolved to 1.4 million UK deaths. And this explains why the likes of the Cheltenham Festival went ahead and UK schools remained open until the 20th of March. Whereas this graph illustrates va various viral pandemic curves where the red line is if little or no controls in terms of preventing spread of the virus are taken as was the case for the UK until the week beginning the 15th of March with the green line of what is achievable if significant measures are taken Whilst the blue line is what likely to happen in China, given that it nipped its pandemic in the bud through use of extreme shutdown measures, which implies to expect the virus to return later in the year in China, though at a much shallower trend trajectory and resulting peak, unless China aims to keep the con country largely locked down until a vaccine or other effective treatments become available. So given the news out of the UK and US this week, what is likely to happen next? Well, clearly if the trend continues then the UK and US are heading for a near total lockdown, which means the current exponential parabolic infection curves are unlikely to be sustained, i.e. there's usually a two to three week lag between cause and effect of measures and the seriously ill showing up in hospitals. So what is the most probable outcome for the US and UK? I think we're going to see a series of waves with diminishing peaks during this year as the government oscillates between lockdowns and relaxed restrictions on the movement of people so as to manage the spread of the virus so that the healthcare systems are better able to cope with the high numbers of seriously ill patients with the objective of building herd immunity in the general population or without the heavy death toll that for Britain would have translated into at least 400,000 
up to as many as 1.4 million deaths with the US figures estimated at between five times Britain's numbers, i.e. to at least two million and as high as seven and a half million. So where this analysis is concerned, we can discount the more extreme fear-mongering projections that have become prevalent in the mainstream press recently, such as the New York Times reporting that the CDC projections resolved to between 200,000 to 1.7 million American deaths this year from COVID-19, as the governments are just not going to allow such death tolls to take place. Hence, each passing day we are seeing ever tighter restrictions on the movement of people being announced, which are trending towards enforced lockdowns Italy style, so as to prevent where the UK and US were heading. In this respect, the NHS has started sending out letters to 1.5 million vulnerable people warning them to self-isolate for the next three months, which gives a good indication of how long the current cycle of infections is likely to run before it dissipates back into a safe zone, i.e. there are going to be a lot of infections taking place for the next two months then tapering off in the third month, with the actual number of infected likely to run at 40 times the official number of those testing positive in the UK, and a similar number for the US, as both nations are taking the controlled herd immunity approach rather than containment. So take this as a warning that if you really want to avoid becoming one of the infected herd, try to isolate yourselves for at least the next three months to get through this initial big wave of infections that carries the highest risk of death due to the inability of the healthcare systems to cope. And finally, case fatality rate analysis. Lack of testing is the Achilles heel for most Western nations as manifested in the percentage that test positive. For the lower the percentage testing positive then the greater the likelihood a nation has a grip on its pandemic. In which respect, Italy, despite having conducted more tests than the US and UK combined, nevertheless the fact that 26% test positive illustrates that Italy is still not testing enough people to identify and isolate. Which goes a long way to explain what Italy continues to experience. And the rest of this extensive analysis that concludes in a detailed coronavirus trend forecast for both the US and UK, which is followed by stock market implications, has first been made available to patrons who support my work. So, for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work because there is a silver lining in this dark cloud which you'll find out if you subscribe. And do remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos in this series as we face the oncoming coronavirus storm. The next three weeks are not gonna be good. They're gonna be dis catastrophic.